Welcome to section 22 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing Neisseria gonorrhea, which you can see right here. This scene will take place in the air inside of a gondola. For those of you who may not know, a gondola is a container that carries passengers up a mountain. If you've ever been skiing or snowboarding, you probably know what I'm talking about. Anyways, gondola sounds kind of like gonorrhea, so we've made this scene taking place in a gondola to help you remember that this image is all about Neisseria gonorrhea. Before we get too far into the story, take a moment to appreciate the beautiful scenery. Notice that we've included a pink sunset to help you remember that this is a gram-negative organism. This is a gram stain of Neisseria, which we covered in the last two videos, but here it is again for your review. The stain is red or pink, which is why it's a gram-negative organism, and the bacteria are circular-shaped. Also notice that they form little pairs right next to each other, which you can see right here, for example. This is why Neisseria are classically described as gram-negative diplococci. Okay, moving on, notice that we've shown the overview image on the inside of the gondola. Quite literally, the exact same image that's shown right here. This is to help you connect this image with the overview image so you can remember all of the overview information when you think of the gondola. We're not going to cover the overview information again, but please be sure to watch the Neisseria overview video. Next, notice that we've shown two unique pillars that help provide structural support to the gondola. Pillar sounds like pili, so in this image, they represent pili. The fact that there are two of them and that they look distinct from one another is to help you remember that Neisseria gonorrhea exhibits antigenic variation of its pili. We discussed this idea a bit in the overview image, but we like to reinforce it here because antigenic variation of the pili is what allows Neisseria gonorrhea to evade the immune system, and it's also the reason why vaccine development has been difficult. So antigenic variation of its pili is possible because the organism has complex genes that code for the pili. As the genes undergo recombination, the pili are significantly altered. And like I just said, the pili are an important virulence factor because they allow the organism to evade the immune system. So two unique pillars for antigenic variation of pili. Now we've added this guy on the gondola who is peeing off the ledge. I guess he couldn't wait until they got to the top of the mountain. If you look closely at this guy's shirt, you can see that we've included the letter S on it. This is a reference to the Scarlet Letter. For those of you who haven't read the book, it's basically about the life of a woman who conceives a daughter through an affair. In the story, this woman is required to wear the letter A on her dress in front of the townspeople, which stands for adulteress. So as a reference to the novel, we thought the letter S on this person's shirt would be a good way to help you memorize that Neisseria gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted infection. The fact that he's peeing off of the ledge should help you remember that symptoms in males include dysuria and penile discharge. Now notice that we've shown the pee hitting a scarecrow's eye down below. Pee in the eye should help you remember that Neisseria gonorrhea can cause neonatal conjunctivitis. Now we'll show this really buff guy in the gondola. Notice that he's flexing and appears to be making a very prominent fist. Fist sounds like fits, which is a reference to Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome. Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome is a complication of pelvic inflammatory disease that results in inflammation of the liver capsule. So Neisseria gonorrhea can cause Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome. This is an image of Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome. Notice the adhesions between the liver capsule and the peritoneum right here. These are also sometimes referred to as violin string adhesions, and these occur as a result of liver capsule inflammation. Okay, moving on, we saw that the buff man was making a really tight fist, but why? Well, as you can see now, he was holding on to a pregnant woman who fell out of the gondola as they came across a rough spot in the wire. Luckily for her, the buff man grabbed her just in the nick of time. We've included the pregnant woman in the scene and shown her outside of the gondola as a symbol for ectopic pregnancy. Just like an ectopic pregnancy occurs outside of the uterus, this woman is shown outside of the gondola. So this scene here should help you remember that Neisseria gonorrhea can cause pelvic inflammatory disease, which increases the risk of ectopic pregnancy. In order to help you remember that Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome and the increased risk of ectopic pregnancy are caused by pelvic inflammatory disease, we've included this uterus-looking chandelier hanging from the gondola. So uterus-looking chandelier for pelvic inflammatory disease. Okay, now let's zoom up on the buff guy to discuss one more point. If you look closely at his muscles, you notice that his tendons appear like they're coming out of his arm and about to burst. This shouldn't be too surprising considering that he's holding on to a pregnant woman with one hand. We've included this in the image to help you remember that Neisseria gonorrhea can also cause tenosynovitis. This is a painful condition which is due to inflammation of the tendon and its synovial sheath. It classically presents with tenderness and pain along the flexor sheath of the upper extremity. Okay, notice now that we've shown this kid who was enjoying the view down below through the glass ground when all of a sudden the glass began to break around his knees. This gondola ride is getting pretty intense. Anyways, 
And the fact that he's on his knees and they're about to get all cut up by this glass should help you remember that Neisseria gonorrhea can cause septic arthritis. Okay, now let's turn our attention to this guy towards the front of the image who is sitting in another passing gondola. Luckily for him, nothing too dangerous is happening on his ride. Notice that we've shown him holding a clam in his hand. Clam sounds kind of like chlamydia, and we've shown it in this image to help you remember that Neisseria gonorrhea may occur as a co-infection with chlamydia. This detail is important because if both organisms are infecting an individual at one time, then two antibiotics must be given to provide adequate coverage. We'll talk more about treatment in a second. So remember, clam for chlamydial co-infection. As you may have noticed from this guy's clothing, he doesn't appear to be a very clean guy. In fact, he's so smelly that these gnat bugs have decided to take up shop next to him. Now they follow him around and enjoy his pungent smell. Anyways, gnat sounds like N-A-A-T or nucleic acid amplification test. So we've included gnat bugs in this image to help you remember that Neisseria gonorrhea is diagnosed using a nucleic acid amplification test. Okay, now let's discuss treatment. Just like in other videos, we've included a trident in this image to help you remember that Neisseria gonorrhea is treated with ceftriaxone. We've also shown a scarecrow in the background, which, like in other videos, is here to help you remember that macrolides are also used. This is especially helpful in providing coverage for a possible chlamydial co-infection. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 24-year-old male presents to the clinic due to dysuria. He states that his symptoms began two days ago. He is sexually active with multiple partners. Physical examination reveals a white discharge expressed from the penis. Gram stain of the discharge reveals gram-negative diplococci seen in the cytoplasm of neutrophils. Which of the following is the recommended treatment regimen for the causal organism? A. Doxycycline and cephalexin. B. Ceftriaxone and tigacycline. C. Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. D. Ceftriaxone and azithromycin. Or E. Penicillin and clavulinic acid. Hopefully from the question stem you notice that the patient has dysuria, penile discharge, or a white discharge expressed from the penis, and a gram stain that has revealed gram-negative diplococci. Together, this information is consistent with Neisseria gonorrhea. With this in mind, we're asked about an effective treatment. So the correct answer is D, ceftriaxone and azithromycin. All of the other answer choices are distractors and not recommended. From the image, recall that the scarecrow right here represents macrolides and that the trident right here represents ceftriaxone. So the recommended treatment is ceftriaxone for adequate gonococcal coverage with the addition of a macrolide such as azithromycin for a possible chlamydia co-infection. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about Neisseria gonorrhea.